So if you're, maybe you're not doing fasting, if we're doing like a down and dirty, these are the easy ways to be able to fast effectively. The first thing you do, and, and some people in this room may not need to hear this, but the first thing I would say, rip the bandaid off and stop snacking. Like, no one should be snacking. The concept of snacking is so detrimental to our health. And then once you stop snacking, you want to start with a 12-hour feeding window. Really, you don't, go, you don't eat between dinner and breakfast. And you might have already go 13 or 14 hours successfully. I always remind people that what will happen when you are no longer snacking is it will force you to structure your meals differently. We know protein is the most satiating macronutrient. And what that means is that if you are properly putting your macros together at your meals, protein, fats if appropriate, non-starchy carbs, then you will not be hungry in between meals. I always say when someone says to me, I, I feel like I need a snack in between my meals, I said, then you need to push the protein lever or you need to add more healthy fats. If you're having a ribeye, you don't need to add more fats to your plate. If you're having a filet, you can add some fats to your plate. It's really that simple, push the protein lever. You wanna also reduce your carbohydrate intake. Now again, in this audience, they might not need to hear it as much as a lot of audiences that I speak to. People freak out, the average American is consuming 200 to 300 grams of carbs a day and not from vegetable sources or a piece of fruit, they're having the processed carbs. So getting your total carbs um, under 75 or 50 grams is a good starting point, especially if you're trying to lose weight. Absolutely important. And you know, one of the things that I get asked about a lot is total versus net carbs. I always say net carbs is a cheat. As long as you recognize that's what it is. You know, if they put a lot of fiber into something in an effort to get you to believe that it, is, it isn't as many carbohydrates as you're consuming, be honest with yourself. You know, Lily's dark chocolate is a good example, right? Lily's dark chocolate, stevia sweetened chocolate, little, you know, might be a little bit easier, less, you know, insulin response or blood sugar response. And I always tell people, actually record the whole total carbohydrates. Don't, don't say it's 20. Instead of saying it's, you know, 14, it's really 28. Call it what it is. Understanding what a clean fast is. A lot of people don't understand what a clean fast is. They think they can eat and drink anything they want. You know, they're, again, the fit pros, I'll pick on them. A lot of people on social media, they'll say if it's under 50 calories, it doesn't count. That's actually not true. Um, if you're eating food, that's actually breaking your fast. Like grapes or banana, there was someone the other day that was saying that, and I took everything I could not to say anything about what they were talking about. So really, that's as easy as you can go. Now, the other thing about protein that I want to mention that is going to help you succeed with intermittent fasting is pushing that envelope. And I talk about 30 to 40 grams as a starting point. I actually had someone um, reach out to me who's in the fasting space who told me that wasn't achievable. And I said, really? I said, because I eat 40 or 50 grams in a meal. And I eat at least two meals a day, if not more, depending on my, what my schedule's like. So if I'm having a 50 grams of protein in a, in a steak, you're going to try to say, like, that's impossible for us to be able to achieve. I think that's ridiculous. Remember, protein will shut that satiety cues. You won't be looking for more food because you will be too darn full. 